Hello, be gays. My name is Monica Liana, where I talk about books while doing my makeup. So, I meant to do this like a week ago because, yeah, I finished all three of these books like a week ago. So, I've meant to do this a while back, but I got busy and just day after day, I just didn't do it. So, I'm finally here. So, we can finish up the last of the two MC Fallen books and then the third book in like the Manning Lake series slash four books anyways so let's talk about the fifth book in the fallen series which is a uh, nova and lily's uh book so this one so somebody told me that this one was like a slow burn and i was curious to know what they meant by slow burn because i like slow burn romances i don't really like insta love but oh my gosh this one is a hundred percent a slow burn so lily and Nova have known each other since they were kids. Lily's dad was part of the cartel. She didn't really know this. She was like a little kid. So like she knew her dad was bad, but apparently he was part of the cartel and his, her mom tried to steal her one night cause she was trying to leave her dad cause they're always fighting and blah, blah, blah. And he tried to steal her one day and in the process of like trying to take her at night the dad wakes up kills the mother and like nova saves her because they've been neighbors since they were like kids and he's like best friends with her brother so they've known each other for like years and when her dad went to prison and her mom died their nova's family adopted them and her brother ends up going into the military. He's perceived to be dead because he basically disappears and they think that he died. And pretty much that's when the kind of the book begins after that. It's like, it's been like years later, she's now an adult. They've been, like I said, they've been kind of family for like years. And Nova, does not want Lily he's like no it's not gonna happen and she's always been pining over him and one day I think she was like 17 18 something like that she catches him and another girl having sex and she like watches and he ends up coming up to her and it was all like you know whatever fantasy you got going on just get it out of your head it's not gonna happen so like whatever you are thinking cut it out and from there is pretty much where the story begins like where like from there because she ends up getting a man because of this she decides like you know what i need to lose my virginity because it's not gonna happen with him and i need to move on and she ends up getting with like this guy that now she's engaged with and like I said this is where kind of the book begins after all that like flashback and the guy that she's engaged to is not part of the MC he doesn't actually really like her motorcycle life slash family which is kind of weird because I'm like that's kind of who she is but like he doesn't like that part of her he likes the other parts he doesn't even really like that she has tattoos like i guess she likes he doesn't mind her having tattoos but like ashley tells her to not get any more because she's like pretty much covered and she always gets tattoos by nova because nova is a tattoo artist but like she's constantly getting more tattoos and everything like that kind of sounds like me <laughs> and he tells her that he doesn't want her to get any more tattoos before like their wedding which i'm like that would be a big no-no for me. You can't sit there and tell me I can't give no more tattoos. I would be upset. <laughs> and Nova all of a sudden starts to get kind of a little bit jealous because I think he finally came to the conclusion that like she is legit moving on. And I think he just sees it like, oh shit, maybe I fucked up and whatnot. So he's like all flirting with her, which she doesn't like because she's kind of like, you know, you had your chance. Why are you flirting with me now? 
which I'm like, valid point. I would get annoyed with that shit too. Even though she's like, I love you. And of course I would want to be with you, but like you're playing with me. I don't like you playing with me. And so they kind of have this like flirt slash she's scared because she would love to be with him. But then like, she knows she's like, you're not going to love me the way I love you. Like I love you deeply. And I could tell that you're not going to love me like that, that like you're always going to be, you know, Casanova. And it's just like, if that's what it is, like, don't hurt me. Like, I can't, I can't stand it. Like, I will not be able to recover if you hurt me type of thing. And that's like their playing around thing. She goes to help basically Zeus, like Zeus doesn't want her to do this. But she pretty much says she's going to do this regardless if he wants it. But like I said, her dad was in the cartel. There's a lady that's in the cartel that's a boss that's in their town that recognizes her and is like, hey, your dad was a really good soldier. Um, how about you come work for me? Because she has like an underground like sex porn thing going on. She's like, well, you know, come with me and you can be my assistant and she does it to try to get information because you know they got like underage girls and stuff like that so she's trying to like get in there to help get them out and get information and nobody other than zeus knows about like the other people find out later but they don't know the depths of like how she like went underground and stuff like that and how this all connects so that's as much as i'm gonna tell about the plot but this one was good but a hundred percent this one is a slow burn because they don't actually become a couple until like the end versus like all the other books yeah they have their conflicts but like they become a couple probably about like midway through and then it goes from there it's like nah they don't become a couple until like the very end because of all of the stuff that's going on and pretty much because of nova like nova just is for some reason just so gun whole about how she he thinks that she could do so much better and he doesn't want to like hurt her and he doesn't think he's worthy so that's why he has never really wanted to be with her because he's just like you could do better and like you know i'd rather be like friends with you because like i said they've been in each other's lives like pretty much their whole life so it's kind of like i'd rather be able to keep that than like get with you and then i'm not worthy enough type of situation and stuff so it's definitely it was good but this one 100 like yeah it's a slow burn they don't really get i think there's only really like one sex scene maybe there's two but like there's not a lot when it comes to this book this book is definitely a lot more actiony and very much a slow burn so let's go to the sex book which is priest and b which is lola's little sister i i was gonna say that this one's probably my second favorite couple just because i, I love priest even though he is a psychopath and has no feelings i freaking love him and <laughs> because of just how domineering he is and it's not even like in a dom way so like the the themes in this book are kind of somewhat dom submissive but it's not really it's not in traditional sense it's more a sadomasochist like than anything else so <laughs> and i just like how just aggressive he is in the sense of like sh he doesn't think about it so like every book there's like this conflict of like oh i can't be with you but I want to be with you, but I can't be with you. And then eventually they kind of like, okay, we're going to do this. And then like, now you're mine. There is none of that in this. So <laughs> B gets hurt at the beginning because Priest is doing this um, kind of mission for the club. There's a guy that like basically doesn't hear their, heed their warning and he went to go do something to this guy i think he put like a bomb in his car 
Well, B somehow kind of was like, I guess kind of on a date with him and he didn't know. So she kind of gets somewhat impacted. Like she's fine, but kind of gets somewhat impacted. And he ends up killing this dude like in front of her. Like <laughs> he, even though he's the one that technically did the bomb, he blames the guy and is like, cuts the throat in front of B. Like, is like, I did this for you. Like he hurt you. I will make him bleed for you and everything like that. And then she passes out, blah, blah, blah. Well, Lola's all mad because she's like, B could have been hurt and killed and everything, which is like, yeah, that's true. But like, he didn't know. Like, he wasn't trying to hurt B. He was trying to hurt this other guy. Like, that's his job. And she gets all pissed off with Priest. And Priest is like, I would never hurt her and stuff like that and whatnot but like lola's being a little bitch in this book anyways so b for some reason has like found priests fascinating like i guess she's becoming like a psychologist or something like that if i remember right and she actually um knows about like psychopaths and stuff like that and she knows that like priest is a psychopath like she knows this he, he's diagnosed as a psychopath and so she's just always found him very fascinating and he knows that she's around like he calls her his little shadow because she's always kind of like around him like just shadowing him well after kind of this encounter I don't know exactly I, I can't remember how they end up saying that they're going to get together but she basically like pushes on him and he eventually is like okay if we do this just know you will be mine like and everything and she's like yeah he's like okay and there's literally no conflict he doesn't sit there and be like oh you could do better he doesn't think like oh um maybe i'm like not right for you no once they solidify their relationship like they have sex and everything like that he's just like that's it you are mine there is no question he doesn't ever doubt it he doesn't ever think like oh i could she could do better like no she is his property like he does not doubt it like he will fight anybody he even gets it with lola gets in with lola because like lola tries to like i guess you could say somewhat get in the way and be like oh she could do better and like she basically doesn't want B to get with priest and her reasoning is stupid because she's like oh he's older than you which is like Lula you and your men are 19 years apart you can't say that and like but she's like scared of priest because priest has no feelings which is like I can get that point but if they have if they have good chemistry and like like I said, they get along and everything. It's kind of like, just because you don't understand it doesn't mean that it's wrong. But, you know, B doesn't fucking care what Lola says. And priests don't give a damn what Lola says. He's like, yeah, I get it. You're my boss's, like, girl. And you're technically the queen of the club. But it's like, I will stab you and walk over your body to get to B. Because B is my property. Just so you know. And it's just like, yes. I love it. Yes, priest. Put everybody in their place. Like, seriously, he he is aggressive with it in the sense of like, he don't care. Like, that's my girl. I don't care what anybody says and everything. Like he positions her, like when they're around each other, he like positions her. So he's like, she's like in the back and everything like that. Like he at all time has her surrounded and like, I'm going to kill anybody if they try. And so the theme of this book is that there is a another psychopath a religious psychopath that is trying to get to be and he's killing people for her in a way and like giving her as gifts so priests is around her like you know for her protection there's a lot of like drama going on <clears throat> and whatnot and then you find out kind of why priest is the way he is because yeah it's it's kind of probably what you think but it's like there's a lot of bad things that happen to him is why he is the way he is why he has no feelings why he basically is you know the death like he does the death because he just blood makes him happy 
in a way like blood makes him calm because of all the shit that was done to him but <laughs> okay we're gonna get a little graphic because i have to i have to get a little graphic in this this is the most intense sex scenes out of all six books this one is the most intense so <laughs> um there's that one point so priest like i said he doesn't have any feelings but he's starting to technically feel with her like you know he's starting to get a little conflicted a little bit with her and like so they just had sex and they had a good time and everything like that they are very aggressive with each other like he likes to see her cry but she loves it so it's not like forceful or anything like that but he kind of freaks out afterwards and goes to the bathroom and like cuts his wrists and or anything like that just to kind of like alleviate some of their stress and everything like that because people that cut they do that sometimes it's like something about the the physical pain is better than the emotional pain so that's what he does he goes and cuts his like wrist and everything like that she ends up finding out and she asks she's like you know if you need this if like you know you need pain and everything like that can i be the one to do it and he's like what are you talking about he's like yeah can, like you know next time you feel this need to hurt yourself can i be the one to hurt you and he's like okay like let's let's figure this out like i'm curious and he's like but it needs to hurt and she's like okay so she comes back with a ribbon and a candle <laughs> and what they do is she ties his dick and balls with the ribbon nice little bow nice and tight and then while she's jerking him off she pours the wax on him and he then like he's loving it but then he asks he's like hey that's actually not enough I need more take my knife and carve your name into like down here like onto his thigh and i was just like i now don't 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 bleed him out like you know there's there's veins down there be careful but like yeah that was what they did and i was like oh. and he carves his name her name into her cubic bone like down there like he carves the name and he says he's gonna keep doing it until like it sticks and i'm like y'all are crazy <laughs> y'all are crazy but like yeah so that's their relationship i don't judge it i'm very fascinated but yeah so that's their relationship and like i said and there's a lot of like story in the background but like i just had to tell you that sex scene that sex scene <laughs> was just absolutely crazy and the thing is i know people do this i know people do this some people really do like pain so it's just like i wonder if like the um the author did her homework <laughs> i was just like that was a very specific thing that just happened but yeah so that was their relationship and I will 100% say that I think that Priest and Bay are probably my second kind of favorite couple just because of how intense they are. Like I love it. It was just so much and I I love Priest more than I love Bay or B. I don't know why I keep calling her Bay. But like I like cuz B is weird cuz she seems like a goody goody two shoe. But then behind closed doors, she's not a goody goody to shoe. And I guess that's the whole yin and yang thing of like, she is actually, you know, good in like person, but behind closed door, she can give priests his crazy ways. And it's like, interesting. Okay. Now let's go to, I think it's Move the Stars, is the third book with uh, Lake and Manning. Oh my gosh. So. I still don't really like this couple, but this book was, I guess, somewhat more interesting than the other two. So, recap. Manning got with a lake sister, which is Tiffany. They married. It's years later. Like, I think it was like three years later. 
Blake moved to New York City. Instead of going to her school that she was supposed to go to in California, she decided to go to New York City and pursue acting. Yeah, she because she wants to be like on Broadway. Well, not Broadway, the um, theater. She wants to do theater and stuff like that. So she decided to do that instead of going to school. And I think it was, I think she was gonna possibly go into like the medical field or something like that. She decides to do the other thing. And the reason she tries to do that is just cause she wanted to kind of get away. She, she couldn't be around them. She is now isolated from her family. Like her dad doesn't talk to her, basically disowned her, which I'm like, that's so shitty. Like I get that like, she kind of did this abrupt thing. It's like, but why would you just disown your child? But some parents are apparently like that. <clears throat> so Manning's doing good. He and Tiffany, I mean, they have a house. He has a mortgage. They, uh, he's working with the dad and is making like buku bucks apparently and doing really well. He wasn't able to like expunge his record, I guess, but it's fine. Like, you know, he has a job and everything like that. So like at the end of the day, like he's doing great. They don't have any kids or anything like that, but you know, they're doing fine. Um, Lake is kind of a struggling actor in a way. She has like two jobs, going to auditions, um, you know, going to school and like doesn't have any help. So, you know, she's kind of living that struggle life, but she's doing fine. She's actually like for once living kind of for her instead of just like what her family wants and everything like that. So she's doing for the most part pretty great. And Manning shows up and so, okay. You know how I said with the other two books, I liked Manning and I feel like Manning was kind of the smart one it's like yeah i get it he he would love to be with lake but he knows he can't be with lake and he, but the only thing that was weird is that he kind of like viewed her as this virginal thing and then blah 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 and then like lake was kind of a stupid dumb girl very naive she needed to grow up it's there were their roles kind of reverse so he shows up just all of a sudden after three years nothing shows up and the reason i guess he shows up now is because he's officially off parole so like he doesn't have to like check in with anybody and everything like that so he uses his job as a way to get to like because i guess he's gonna see clients and that's why he went to new york was like to go see clients but his real intention was to go see lake and he shows up and basically just wants to be with her. And Lake is like, what are you talking about? Like, first of all, you're married to my sister. It's been years. All of a sudden, like, all of a sudden you're just like, oh, okay, I'm off promotion, pro probation, and I can be here like, let's bone. Like, that's pretty much what he wants. And she's like, oh, what the fuck? Like, you can't do that to me. And they kind of get interrupted Cause she's still, she's not with, I forgot what his name is, but she's not with that guy. She's just like friends with that, with that guy. And he comes to get her because it's like the morning time. He's like, Hey, we're going to go to breakfast. Cause he shows up cause they were going to go to breakfast. And Manning's like, Oh, I'll join and everything. And really thinks like that they're dating and lake doesn't correct him because she's like well you know if you want to think that we're dating and that bothers you good want it to bother you and he ends up convincing her he's like hey come with me to this play like your mother got tickets let's go to this play and everything like that she asked for me to take you because i know this is what you want and everything like that she reluctantly agrees they go to the play and they finally have kind of a conversation of like, yes, I'm with Tiffany, but I will divorce her. I don't want to be with her. I want to be with you. You are always the one I loved. And at first, Lake kind of says like, no, but then eventually she's just like, okay, fine. 
we'll do this but like you promise me you're not going to hurt me and they have sex she loses her virginity because she tells him she's like i've never had sex like she didn't tell him at first he figures it out and everything like that and he's actually cool with it he's like yes i got to take her because like i thought i fucked that up but like nah i get to take it and she tells him she's like yeah i've never even been with the guy that you think that i've been with and but then he asks her he's like oh but who have you been with and she's like well i've kind of dated she's like like i said obviously she's never had sex i don't even think i think she's never even had a done a blowjob she's just like you know kiss kind of like fondle type of thing and he gets all like jealous and very aggressive in a sense of like well tell me tell me information and i'm like first of all you don't have the privilege to actually know this information in a way because it's just like first she's never had sex with them so like what are you getting upset about and also like obviously she's going to date you're married you're married you've been fucking his her sister like you've been actively fucking her and all she's done is kissed a few guys and you're all upset like dude get over your damn self like i swear i did not like manning in this one because he was just so aggressive even though it's like that's not your woman it could have been but you said no for the right reason so don't get mad that she's had a few kissing moments with people like calm down and while they're in new york he's only there for like i think a few days tiffany has been trying to blow up his phone and she he's going to divorce her he's like i'm going to divorce her but he doesn't want to do it over the phone and he's like if i talk to her she's gonna wonder where i'm at and like you know i'd rather just like not talk to her until i get home and she's blowing up the phone blowing up the phone i think eventually he picks it up and turns out tiffany is pregnant and that's what she was saying and he is all upset because he's like what do you mean you're pregnant like you were on the pill and she's like well i just i got off of it and he's like when the hell did you get off of it like why didn't you tell me this she's like well i just thought like you know we were talking about possibly starting he was like yeah but like we didn't confirm it she's like well uh i thought you would be happy and you know he's happy in the sense of like he's gonna have a child not with the woman that he wants and like he knows that she manipulated it like he knows this like you did this on purpose and whatnot like you're tr like you knew something was going to happen so you try to lock me in <clears throat> so in front of Blake he basically says oh, yeah you know we're gonna have a baby so he ends up going back to California and they decide to not be together um mainly Lake decides that but she's like you're gonna have a baby and I know you're not gonna want to like leave the baby and you know that Tiffany's not gonna have it where you have the baby like like you know the co-parenting like you know uh Tiffany is gonna make it really hard on you so it's like go back to your wife like it's never it's not meant to be blah 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 so that's basically what happens and it's like it's years later like I don't know another two or something like that um Manning and Tiffany actually do get a divorce because she ends up having a miscarriage and after she has the miscarriage he leaves because he just he didn't want to be with her he was just kind of gonna stick with her until you know the baby but like now the baby's not there they had a miscarriage well Lake is doing somewhat decent in um in her acting career and she ends up getting approached by some guy that basically is like oh you would be great for this reality tv thing that's going to happen and this is like so this is this book is supposedly supposed to be like the early 2000s and stuff like that remember when reality tv was like a really big deal i mean it's still a big deal but like it was new what was like the oc is that what it was called or laguna beach or the hills i think that's what they were called like it's kind of supposedly supposed to be like that is going to happen and she ends up getting approached by this guy that's like hey why don't you come on to this reality show it's in california it's like in la and it can help 
boost like your acting career in a way and like I said this is like the early where reality TV was not really all that known it's like this was kind of a new concept and she ends up deciding to go mainly just because she kind of got out of what she needed from New York and she does kind of miss California she's like she's scared to go back to California but she's like yeah I've always like wanted to go back so like I guess this is the opportunity to go so she's on this reality TV show she didn't really like it but they shoot it and she ends up somewhat reconnecting with her sister Tiffany um, because she shows up to her like premiere showing that she was having at her house and Tiffany kind of confronts her in a way about like they they kind of hash it out because she's just like oh he came to see you right and Lake gets a little uppity she's like you knew that I wanted him she was like I thought it was like a little crush she's like you know so Tiffany knows that she was basically being a bitch and was like taking her crush away from her she was like I just thought it was kind of a crush she was like well it wasn't like I really cared for him and you did it on purpose and she she kind of admits that she does that she did do it on purpose and whatnot and then Lake kind of admits that like yeah we kind of did hook up when he came to New York and everything like that and so they kind of hash it out and they kind of say each you know sorry to each other and just get a little bit on a better footing and stuff like that and she still hasn't seen Manning Manning actually is now like not even working with the dad even though I guess the dad was willing to let him keep working because I guess they kind of got into a good relationship so he was like and he knew that Tiffany and them weren't doing the great so he was actually okay with them divorcing and basically it was like you know you could stay on well he decides not to stay on and he decides to i think become a carpenter yeah i believe he's a carpenter and he has a house back to this uh area that lake and him talked about at one point and he's waiting to fix up this house 100 percent to then go after her well they have a chance chance encounter while she's like in town and he's dropping off one of his pieces to someplace and he decides to be like hey come to this house and anything like that we can have dinner she decides to come but she's she more or less is coming to say goodbye because they've never really properly i guess said goodbye to each other so she's like well i'm just gonna come and say goodbye and like really 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 cut this off because it's like I've been pining over him for years it's not really healthy I can't move on so I'm going to basically say goodbye for one last time in a proper way and whatnot definitely because it's like you know they're older they're mature and everything like that well she gets there she's very pleased with the house and come to find out it's like he kind of made it for her and he's like I always wanted to come after you like I just did it like I was just worried because like you're going on the show and you're like dating guys like maybe you're dating one of them and she's like no it's honestly just for the show like I didn't date really anybody it's really just like show thing and you know he's just such a jealous guy honestly it's a little annoying because it's like dude like you're not with her calm down <laughs> so they end up kind of making up and decide to finally like be like you know what we're going to be together and that's how the book ends they actually are officially now together <sighs> this book was fine i don't feel it like i don't know what's weird like the weird thing about it is like i don't care for them as a couple i don't really like either of them and i don't care so like that's like the biggest thing about like a romance book like you want them to be together you want to feel the pining and it's like I don't feel nothing like you guys are together you guys are not together like shit make up your damn minds like I don't care <laughs> and like I guess there technically is a fourth book I don't think I'm gonna read it because it's one it's only like six hours long so I'm like so it's a short book and like from what I read I read the description is basically them battling to 
become parents so like i'm assuming she's gonna have some type of fertility issues and i'm like i don't really care about that i'm like i don't already like you guys really all that much as a couple like i don't even need to hear about your struggle about fertility and i'm assuming they're going to have a baby either they're gonna have a baby or they're going to adopt a baby and i'm like i don't care good i'm happy that you guys are finally together but like other than that i could care fucking less so yeah this book series sucked <laughs> like it sucked you ever thought about like uh reading it just don't it's not steamy they're not cute and all they do is just go back and forth and it's just like and there's no chemistry there's none there's no chemistry there's nothing like like kova and like uh freaking ria like even though when they're not together you can feel the chemistry and you're just like waiting them it's like you're waiting around and waiting around and then like they finally eventually have sex like literally there's like one sex scene and then it's just like that's it and lake is like i said naive she's definitely better in the third book 100 percent. but then it's like manning is becoming this jealous douche for no fucking reason and it's just like oh my gosh you two i guess you guys are made for each other because you guys are very annoying but yeah that's the end of that I'm gonna get going. I gotta go get groceries and like clean up my house. So, fun. Have a good day. Bye.